a smaller uh, shaft to get there. Now, I'll uh, give you an opportunity to look down in the shaft in a minute, uh, but you won't see floor four, you won't see ground. Uh, what you'll see is water, uh, and there's a reason for that. Now, this was opened in, the in 1900. It closed in 1960. In the years preceding 1960, uh, the uh, demand for anthracite coal uh, was lessening. Uh, but the employer was still paying the same extravagant amount of money to pump out all that water from below. Now, he wasn't happy that his uh, uh, proceeds from coal weren't paying as much for that uh, pumping anymore. So what he decided to do was stop the pumping, save that expense, uh, let the water come into the normal water table for the mountain, uh, close the shaft, which it did in 1960, and just mine out this level uh, for all that it's worth. Now, uh, so when you look down, what you're going to see is a lot of water. Uh, and that water is the normal water table for the mountain. It's about 220 feet below us. So when you look down, that's how far down it is to the water. But recognize there's 400 more feet of water uh, below that. Now, before we look down, let's talk about these little uh, cubby holes, uh, niche holes up to that point. Okay, so here we're just looking at the back of the shaft, uh, a different perspective. Uh, this is where the empty cars would come in uh, on their track. They'd be eight and on the bottom, little uh, uh, spikes that when you rotated over your uh, shoulder into the rock face, get your little dust, uh, get your little dirt. But when you consider that the aim is to get uh, eight to ten holes about a foot deep, uh, this isn't getting it done uh, real quick, right? Because all you've got is your upper body, body weight to kind of shove it into the rock face. Now, the employer uh, had a solution, a great idea. He gave you a miner's helper, and that miner's helper would stand behind you. And as you rotated this uh, tiny rod uh, over your shoulder, he would attempt to hit the end uh, with a <laughs> sledgehammer uh, to give you that little extra oomph uh, into the rock face. Now, uh, you laugh, you understand the problem there. It's dark, it's right behind your head, and you don't have a hard hat. So you had to get uh, in good with your miner's helper. Now, here's uh, after steam was input, you can see the steam output there. Uh, we have uh, sort of a, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, now, this is good because it does the work for you. It does the drilling, uh, but it's uh, 60 pounds. So you have to hold it into the rock face, right? Okay, so now remember the primrose vein, the medium-sized vein of coal. This is the diamond vein. Uh, it's a narrow uh, vein of coal, uh, maybe about five feet wide, nine feet high, uh, maybe. Uh, so it's uh, one of the smaller veins of coal. Not, not all veins of coal are created equal. The largest in the valley is the mammoth vein. It's about 100 feet uh, in certain areas and then breaks off into tinier veins. Uh, we did mine it uh, in the back. Uh, it's not on the tour, uh, but across the street in the parking lot, uh, they are mining it over there. Although eight to 10 holes, about a foot deep, uh, with whatever uh, tools he had available to him at that time. Now, once he did that, he would have used whatever explosives were available to him. Early days, it would have been black powder. Uh, later on, after TNT was invented, it would have been sticks of dynamite. And he would have packed it all in there with his packing material, brought his fuse down to hopefully someplace safe. He would have yelled, fire, 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 to let everyone know he's doing a, an intentional explosion. And then he would have uh, lit the fuse. Now, uh, hopefully he had a, a productive explosion, but first, before he checked, he would check for black damp and fire damp. Now, hopefully he had a mine safety lamp uh, to do that. Uh, if he didn't, he would look for that canary to see what condition it was in. If he didn't have a canary, he would just say a little prayer, go up in there, and hope <laughs> for the best. Now, the first, the best course of action, believe it or not, is to try and pull it out of there, uh, even at the risk of losing fingers. Because otherwise, you could go up in there uh, and have it explode later and either trap you or kill you. Uh, now, uh, keep in mind, in early days, it's very dark. So despite your efforts, you may miss a dud or two, right? Uh, so that's why this was one of the uh, uh, most frequent incidents, is the uh, late uh, explosion of these duds. 
Um, but in this case, let's say everything went fine, and he has a lot of debris, a lot of coal up there. Now, he would have built this chute uh, for the coal to go down in there. Now, keep in mind, there's no chute building crew. Uh, there's no roof building crew. Uh, he had to do that all himself, and he had to be good at it. Uh, because his life depends on it, right? His life and the miner's helper. So he would have built this, uh, and he and his miner's helper would have shoved all the debris down into the chute. Now, of course, uh, the mule driver, knowing his job, would have had <coughs> an empty car there already. So the debris just goes down into the car, and he's done with that iteration. Uh, but he does that procedure. <laughs>
Interesting. 